Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. There we are. And, oh, not fully charged. Now, uh, about the Kawasaki Mule conversion, the 1987 Kawasaki Mule 1000 KAF450 conversion. It's coming into kind of its final pieces. Um, look at that. It's up on all four tires. All four tires have air in them. I took this tire off, if you remember yesterday. She was flat, and I put some uh, tire grease on it. And, uh, um, we sealed it, so that's on. I filled the back tires up with air. Um, well, here, let me show you to you from this side. And there's so much stuff in the way, it's hard to really get a good look at it. But just to kind of show you how it sits. So not too bad. It does have a little bit of a downhill that's going to probably get a little worse when I put the bigger tires on it. So I did that. The second thing I did was um, I got these tacked on now. Right. So I can actually roll it around. And it actually rolls pretty easy. Then what I did is I cut the engine plate and I had it bolted on to the engine and then I cut a piece of chain and you could see the chain sitting there and actually um, set it up with the torque converter so that I could see that this sprocket smoothly went to the torque converter and came back and it wasn't hitting either side and um, then it was like impossible to figure out where anything was so I bolted the engine to the plate and once again set up the engine so that the torque converter and chain and all that were really really perfect and then I was able to kind of reach in front of the engine and put these boogers here it's kind of bubble gum it's not a great weld in any way manner or form and I put one on the other side also because I wanted the plate to kind of stay put right So now I can weld it rigid, right? I can put a nice bead across here. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to take the frame out um, one more time. And I'm going to, you know, weld all of this up properly. I might trim this back and put a weld along the front. I'm probably also going to cut the pieces that are going to be under the pipe like a U and there's probably going to be a bolt there and a bolt there so if I had to pull remove the entire engine and transaxle and torque converter and subframe I just have these two bolts here one two and that bolt and that bolt and then the eight up front holding those brackets and about those brackets I'm even considering um, welding them rigid to the bottom frame um, and the reason why I'm thinking of doing that just just to cut down though once I'm bolted through here I shouldn't have too much movement right, it shouldn't move around all that much um, I also ran out of welding wire, so I had to uh, take a quick trip to Tractor Supply, and I also didn't have any inch and a long, inch and a half long, five sixteenths bolts. That guy down there, so I had to buy some of those 
today also. So, um, it's looking pretty good. Even with as careful as I was, and I did try to be careful, I cut more of this out than I needed to. I'm not quite sure what exactly went wrong with that. Um, this, with the engine all the way back, it's here, and then I can slide it forward and uh, for adjusting the chain tension. Um, yeah, probably the best thing to do quite honestly for fitting the rest of this is really to um, to um, pull the entire frame out one one last time that'll allow me to weld these up nice and pretty right and those two up real strong it'll let me weld this plate on top bottom all around I kind of need a little bit of a spacer up front so I could get that in there get that welded nice and rigid I went with some real thick plate here so it's not not going anywhere even though it is cantilevered out a little bit um, I should also put some kind of bridge between here and the bottom of the case I don't know if you guys could see that bolt hole down there there, there really should be something going in between the two. And when I also have it out, that allow me to give it a, a little closer look about what kind of skid plates I want to think about underneath here. So, I should probably seal this up too. That will also make it a little stronger. Yeah, I messed I messed around with this quite quite a bit. What I ended up doing to drill the holes and get the holes in the right places, I had to make some. Um, I call them making paper dolls. I had to make an image kind of to the bottom of the engine, and this is the cutout where the torque converter is. So that's one image I had to make for laying things out. I also had to um, this is the image for the back plates that hold the rear end to the frame, the transaxle to the frame back here that is that image and then even for the templates in the front I have another square um, and what I did is I stacked up all four plates at once and clamped them together to a piece of wood and then um, drilled them out um, started with a small bit and then worked my way up to the size I wanted with this. That saves quite a bit of um, time. The paper dolls save some time. And making plates more than, um, more than one at a time also saves some time if you're custom making every plate. Because then you have to... Um, you have to uh, draw the plate, and then um, measure, mark, drill, and if you're doing the measurement, you only have to do it once if you make two plates at the same time, right? And then the mark, you're only marking once, because you're going to drill through the first plate right into the second. Um, you only drill once, even though it's a little thicker for drilling. Um, and then, you know, the plates are the same, right? You don't have too many um, surprises surprises there. So, um, what I want to do is I want to get the mule 
uh, moved up here and I want to start clearing off the lower driveway. So what I'm going to do is some of these guys, um, I don't know, maybe what I'll do is clear out this side and get the mule in this side. So I might move um, a few of these out for the for the time being. I am, I have to admit, I am a little nervous about moving out that guy um, and this guy. They don't have keys. You don't, you don't need a key to steal this, um, this 200X and you don't need a key to steal that ATC 70. And they're, they're both, I mean, believe it or not, they're worth about 800 bucks each. And if you don't need a key to bag them, actually, you don't need a key to bag that 200S either. Um, and you don't need a key for this. So, I mean, between, I don't know, what's this worth? Six, seven, eight? Y you know. Let's make them all worth seven. There's $2,100. One, two, three. And let's make that one worth a quick five, right? It's 2600 bucks in bikes right there. You know, these guys, I don't know. Um... Call the two of them together another fourteen hundred. You know, there's four thousand. This this little cluster of bikes is like a four thousand dollar bill, right? I would be fairly upset if they all disappeared on me. Um, that wouldn't make me happy at all. Uh, thinking about it, though, if I really clear out this place, um, I don't have to worry about anybody stealing that ATC or that um, TRX. Um, 125 there doesn't run. Somebody would have to carry it away. This guy here is probably worth as much as all of them put together. This um, Honda Four Tracks 300 4 by 4. I see people trying to trying to get 25 to 3500 for him, even though that's an antique. It's old now. It's a what is it a 98 or so? It's it's approaching 10. No? It's approaching 20. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta, uh, I gotta go through that mess because I would like to get that up here. So, um, what, what I have left to do is obviously I have a bunch of welding to finish. There's no big surprise. After the welding, I want to clean up the frame. And as a matter of fact, if I can ask for suggestions, some of you guys um, paint up this kind of stuff much more often than I do. I was just going to spray um, some of that Redox um, Rust-Oleum stuff on, and then I was um, I was going to spray paint it black with Rust-Oleum or oh shoot, that's probably what I should have got at Tractor Supply. Also, I'm becoming senile. I didn't pick up the paint anyway. I, I would like, after I finish welding it up, I would like to get some kind of paint on it. I don't know what you guys suggest. POR15, it's really not rusty enough. I don't think, I don't think POR15 will stick to it. I think it'll hop right off. So I was going to give it a quick um, wipe down. I have acetone, maybe a, a, a light wire brush, a light sand, a wipe down hit it with acetone, then I, I, I'd like to um, I like to hit it with some spray paint. So I, I don't know. You dizzy, you spray paint a lot of stuff. What would you hit it with? Um, I mean, it'll, it's more, it's, it's really clean metal, you know, so um, it's just got a little bit, because it's new metal, it's got a little bit of that, um, that oxide that, that, scale from um from casting metal or from rolling metal from cold cold rolling metal it has some of that on there so I, i'm going to clean it up a little bit but i don't plan on going crazy so whatever you guys suggest for paint i'd i'd be curious anyway folks i really want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing remember to keep your feet down keep your head up and please get out there and enjoy all your days take care now folks bye